If you have children enrolled in one of Pasco County's public schools and you plan to vote in the 2020 general elections, there are two candidates you might want to add to your research to-do list. Cynthia Thompson and Kurt Browning. The two are on the ballot for Pasco County School Superintendent. In this video, you'll learn about Kurt Browning, who is seeking a third term. To learn about the other candidate, click on the video below. At the very top, Kurt Browning talks about the path he took to become superintendent. He also talks about his lesson plans if he's reelected. And if he's not, he talks about how he will help his opponent, Cynthia Thompson, get adjusted into the coveted role. Uh, born here, uh, raised here, graduated in Pasco High School in 1976. Um, and um, I had gone to work for the supervisor of elections office in a work program. And uh, when I got out of high school in 76, I continued to stay on in the supervisor's office and um, went to Pasco Hernando Community College, then it's now State College. Uh, got my two year degree, uh, was going down to USF at night to pick up my bachelor's in political science. I was still had plans on that point and on being a lawyer. I wanted to go to law school. Um, and then in 1980, 1980, uh, the former supervisor of elections decided that she was going to retire and everybody started looking at me. I was 22 years old and actually I was 21, 21 when I filed and I was 22 when I was elected, still hold the record for the youngest elected supervisor in the, in the, in the state. Um, and I served in that position for almost 28 years. I went through the 2000 election with Bush v. Gore, um, served on Governor Bush's uh, elections task force that reformed the election law in the, in the state. Uh, and then in 2006, with the election of Charlie Crist as governor, uh, they called and wanted to know if I'd be willing to come to Tallahassee and serve as uh, Florida's Secretary of State, which has elections tucked up underneath it. And um, I was a little hesitant. Uh, I could have been supervisor the rest of my life. Um, so I went. I jumped out there and I said, yes, I'd love to do that. And I did that. Um, and I retired in uh, April of 10. Um, in fall of 10, Governor Scott got elected. Uh, when he took office, or before he took office, they called and said, would you be willing to come back as Secretary of State? And I thought about it for about three seconds, and I said, yes, I would love to come back and be Secretary. So I went back to Tallahassee for about a year and two or three months. Uh, I left in February of uh, 12, and I filed uh, to run for superintendent of schools. Uh, I've been thinking about it for quite a while. Um, I've been getting a lot of uh, polite pressure from uh, folks throughout Pasco County wanting me to come home uh, and manage the school system. And you know, uh, there's, a, there's some discussion out there about, well, you know, there'll be a school teacher that, that manages the school district. And I'm telling you, you're talking about a $1.5 billion business you're managing over 10,000 employees. You're dealing with a teacher's union. Um, uh, there's just so much that is not education related, it's management related. Um, and if anything's gonna get you in trouble, it's gonna be your budget. Uh, but I will tell you, I mean, I, I think, like to think that I'm a quick learner. Uh, I love, I, I told my wife just yet last night, I said, you know, if I had to do it over again, I'd have loved to have been a school teacher. Well, one of the first things that we have to do or continue to do is communicate with moms and dads, uh, guardians of our kids. Uh, we have found since the very onset of COVID back in March uh, is that, that the communication was critical. Uh, that's, uh, that's not going to change. We, we have communicated and communicated and communicated. We have sent emails into homes. We have made phone calls into homes. Uh, we have done videos, posted them out to social media. We've got the website. Uh, we have been just as, as transparent as we possibly can be, because quite honestly, when we're not transparent, um, then parents will start calling us wanting to know this information, and then we're diverted from the work. My plan would be um, is that we would continue to ensure that our communications plan is, uh, is robust, uh, and it's meeting the needs of, of, of our parents. Uh, we've worked hard uh, since March to ensure uh, that our, our, um, our parents are being communicated with, that our teachers know what's going on. Um, doesn't mean that we haven't had teachers or, or, or parents out there that uh, are frustrated. We're all frustrated where we find ourselves. Um, but um, we've had a good plan. We've, uh, 
I, I look at where we are, where other districts are. And, uh, you know, somebody's asked, asked me, you know, well, how is it that you, you've been, and they've said this, how, can, how have you been so successful with it? And I said, well, we've planned and we've planned and we've planned. And now what we're doing is we're working that plan. We're working that plan. And if we need to make adjustments, we will make those adjustments. But what we're not, what we're finding is those are just little tweaks. They're not, they're not, you know, full fledged. Let's throw this one out and let's 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 change it or, or write something new. When we had to make the the decision uh, back in March that we were going to flip the switch and close schools and go to the virtual uh, virtual learning model, distance learning as we knew it then, staff just knocked it out of the park. Uh, but also parents were patient. They, they were as understanding as we could possibly have hoped for. Uh, our teachers, uh, once they got their four or five hours of training, uh, they kind of took this deep breath and said, we can do this. It's not as bad as, as we thought it was going to be. Uh, the other thing we did for our teachers is we uh, uploaded all the curriculum for them. Other districts did not do that. We didn't want our teachers have to do things that they didn't need to do. Um, so uh, what we heard after distance learning was that we needed more structure and we needed more accountability. Uh, we needed more face time with teachers and it was all over the board. It, it where you, depending on the, the, the classroom teacher, depending on the school, uh, depending on some kids, some kids did not engage. Um, they just were not signing in. They weren't completing assignments teachers started reaching out, or should I say school-based employees started reaching out uh, to these kids saying, uh, you, got, you have to sign on, you need to do your work, and uh, they were trying to be held uh, accountable. So what we did is we came up with My School Online, which is literally tied back to the school. So if you are at Atlanta Lakes High School uh, and you want to do My School Online, then you are going to be a student at Atlanta Lakes High School virtually, but if you have Algebra 1, at 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, guess what? If you're doing my school online, you're gonna be doing algebra at 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday. We've, we've asked our teachers to spend at least 50% uh, of, the, of the class time in the actual classroom instruction. Uh, kids have got to see teachers working problems out on boards. Teachers, uh, uh, kids have got to see teachers talking about participles and the parts of speech and they need to see that with a teacher. Uh, teachers need to hold kids accountable for not, uh, for not signing on and not getting assignments in. But I, I feel very, very comfortable where we are now. Now, it's not perfect. And I think some parents are doing it because they don't want to go back into bricks and mortar because of the COVID fear. So, um, but we still have kids kind of ping-ponging back and forth. And I've tried to get parents to understand, don't do that. Mm -hmm. don't, the, the time to, to go back and forth is over because really uh, I'm very concerned about instructional continuity. What are you going to do to make sure that teachers get paid what they're worth? Well, you, I'm sure you're aware that the legislature uh, just passed the, uh, uh, the budget last year that um, uh, bumps the minimum or the starting teacher salaries. Uh, ideally, it, the governor wanted to have them start at $47,500 where PASCO finds ourselves with the appropriation that we were given, and we're not unlike any other district, uh, but we will be coming in at uh, uh, $45,080. We're going from a, a starting salary of, of 39.8 to 45. So it's about a 15% pay increase for uh, new teachers, uh, plus teachers that have, have, have are not making uh, that salary yet. Right. Uh, they could be in there for two, three, four years and not be making forty five thousand. You know, teachers are are are, are very severely underpaid uh, for what uh, they're expected to do, uh, for what they're being held accountable for, and uh, we need to look at that. I have lobbied Tallahassee. Uh, I used to work in Tallahassee. Um, I still have relationships with people in Tallahassee, and I have lobbied people in Tallahassee saying we've got to do something with teacher salaries. Certainly, she would get briefings. Um, there was a briefing book that we prepare by department, uh, budget, uh, everything, because we know two weeks after that general election, there's going to be either me sitting here or a new superintendent.
what happened with me in eight years ago was my election was determined in August because there weren't there weren't any uh, there wasn't a Democratic or a general election opponent. Uh, so I had a long period of time to be prepared to come in in November. Uh, if this is the case, there's two weeks, and I'll assure you there is no way. There's no way that anybody could be prepared in two weeks to come in and take the reins of an organization this large, uh, this complex, uh, and uh, without it without it slowing down, or you're just going to be spending a lot of time um, catching up, learning. You know, we're not a perfect district, but but uh, we're we're working towards it. Uh, it's uh, I, I love the challenge when we know that we can um, we can impact the lives of kids positively. Uh, by providing a, a great education, uh, it's exciting. Uh, it really is exciting, and we've uh, we're uh, we're always moving forward, looking for ways to to uh, provide more for our kids.